Today, my video is about a sacred, ancient healing tree, actually, called Moringa. Starting off, Moringa is really a broad spectrum antioxidant superfood. The botanical name is Moringa olifera. And olifera basically means that it contains oils, and it's scientifically recognized as one of the most nutrient-rich plants in the world. So the Moringa tree originated in India, and now it's mostly found in Asian countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Africa. It's grown in very tropical regions, Florida, and different areas around the world now because it has so many different healing properties. It was actually called the miracle tree, the drumstick tree, the horseradish tree, and the ben oil tree or the benzoil tree from the oil that you get. It's a very high quality oil that you get from pressing the seeds of the Moringa pods. So this wonder tree basically is amazing because it's one of the only plants or trees that everything can be used the roots, the stems, the leaves, the seeds, the pods, the resin, the flowers. They're all considered healing herbs and used for different modalities or different symptoms. In Ayurvedic, which is the traditional Indian healing system, and Unani, which is the traditional Middle Eastern healing system, as well as folk medicine, ancient folk medicine. As a matter of fact, Moringa has been mentioned in the annals of Ayurvedic medicine, and that's one of the world's oldest medical systems. And in that, it lists Moringa as a remedy for over 300 different health conditions, negative health conditions. So research has shown that the majority of the benefits come from the leaves of the Moringa plant, and usually the leaves are the safest, although there are different conditions that you can use the different parts for. The leaves are also known to have one of the highest antioxidant potentials and also a very high protein content. Some of the antioxidant compounds that have been found in the leaves of the Moringa, in addition to vitamin C and beta carotene, are quercetin. And quercetin is a powerful antioxidant which supports normal blood pressure as well as cholergenic acid. And that's also found in high amounts in coffee. And that also encourages normal function of the cardiovascular system and normal blood sugar levels after meals. Uh, it's, Moringa is called a superfood because it has a high nutrient content, has a lot of minerals, a lot of vitamins, protein levels are high, and people in countries have been taking Moringa every single day to supplement, especially in countries that uh, are nutrient deficient. It has macro minerals, it has trace minerals, and it has uh, minerals and, and nutrients and ingredients in it also that help you age more gracefully. So I put together some amazing nutritional benefits about Moringa. Number one, Moringa contains 10 times the amount of vitamin C than oranges. Moringa has three times the amount of vitamin A as carrots. Moringa has more iron than spinach. Moringa has three to four times the amount of calcium than milk. Moringa has twice as much protein as yogurt or milk. Moringa contains 30 compounds that support inflammatory responses within the systems. Now, we are aware these days, and the scientific research points to many different toxins causing inflammation and many negative health conditions that are started with some form of inflammation in the body. And Moringa actually has 30 different compounds that can fight inflammation in the body. 
It also has 46 types of antioxidants and over 92 nutrients. Moringa leaves are approximately 25% protein, which is extremely unique for a plant. And moringa contains all nine essential amino acids. These are going to be histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. But moringa also contains 18 different amino acids. And it's considered to be a complete protein, which is especially important for vegetarians or for vegans if they want to supplement with Moringa. Moringa, Moringa is extremely popular uh, all throughout Europe and all throughout Asia and a lot more popular in different parts of the world than it is in the United States. But it is growing uh, popularity here in the United States as well. Uh, Moringa contains vitamins A, which is beta carotene. It has B1, has B2, B3, choline, vitamin C, like I mentioned earlier, vitamin E, and it actually has vitamin K in it as well, which a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D and vitamin K. Moringa also provides substantial levels of calcium copper, which most people are deficient in, manganese, iron, it's a plant-based iron, magnesium, phosphorus, selenium, another mineral that most people are highly deficient in, including iodine as well, potassium, sulfur, zinc, chlorophyll, and omega fatty acids, omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9. An interesting fact is that Moringa contains more potassium than bananas or potatoes. Moringa contains beneficial macro minerals and trace minerals. Moringa also contains a powerful antioxidant, zeatin. It's called zeatin, Z-E-A-T-I-N, and that's a plant hormone that can help slow the aging process. It's Moringa is highly nutritious and helps treat malnutrition, like I said, in many countries because it's a very cost-effective way, especially in Africa, um, that can be used by the villagers for their babies to provide the full spectrum of nutrients and proteins for people that might be malnourished. It helps athletes now that are using Moringa from around the world and athletes that are competing in endurance sports that are looking for better performance, that are looking for additional protein, plant-based proteins, vitamins, minerals, etc., cetera, uh, are using and turning to Moringa as a source. And studies have also shown that it helps and potentiates faster recovery times from exercise. There's been numerous studies around the positive health benefits of Moringa, uh, it is, which I'm going to go over, studies that show that Moringa protects the liver, it helps stomach disorders, it attacks harmful organisms in your body, supports brain, improves bone health, boosts immunity, it has immunosuppressive properties, it protects the cardiovascular system, it helps with blood sugar, it encourages breathing, better breathing, supports kidney function, helps with fluid balance, uh, promotes, helps promote normal blood sugar levels, and it helps support healthy skin and nails. It's been around a long time, so there's lots of benefits for Moringa. Now you can go to Google Scholar, actually, which will limit your search results to research, study, scientific journals, and the kind of resources um, that you can look up for Moringa or any herb for that matter and look at the therapeutic uh, benefits and the botanical uses and see for yourself what the research says. I always recommend that you go do your own research. So one of the things that we touched on a little bit earlier, I touched on is Moringa as an antioxidant. Uh, oxidants are toxins that cause damage to the cells or damage to the tissues and antioxidants are natural compounds that 
uh, reduce the toxic effect or the oxidation effect. And Moringa is, is actually classified as an antioxidant. And one of the studies that was done in 2006, and that was published by Rutgers University, they looked at 120 species of vegetables for the overall nutritional content and concluded that the tremendous antioxidant content in Moringa placed it among the most promising species for its potential to improve health. That was a study by Rutgers University. Uh, another study, some research that was done by Phytotherapy Research in 2006, said that Moringa provides a rich and rare combination of zeatin, quercetin, beta cetosterol, camphorol, all of those give it a lot of value for the heart, the liver, the kidneys, and the immune system. And these are, those are just com antioxidant components that are contained in the Moringa plant. And in 2014, the Asia Pacific Journal of Cancer Prevention published an article that described Moringa as a plant with numerous health benefits owed largely to its antioxidant content. Those are just a few of the studies on the antioxidant ability of Moringa. So we talked also about the inflammation reducing abilities of Moringa and Moringa for like irritation. You know, inflammation is just irritation. If you think about it. your your tissues are going to be irritated by chemicals or toxins or toxic water or toxic air that you're breathing in. Um, and in the majority of cases that I've studied over the years, we see inflammation across the board in pretty much every single health condition you can imagine. You know, if you're talking about headaches or you're talking about joint pain, or you're talking about diabetes, it just, it doesn't matter. There's always some, especially with gut health, there's always like some form of inflammation going on in the gut. But one of the major benefits of antioxidants is that they soothe irritated tissue. They kind of like help put out the fire, so to speak. So the system in your body and the systems, the cells, the tissues, whatever, are kind of like at peace and they're not overly excited or they're not overly stimulated. It's like being in the red all the time is a major stressor on your body and overall health. Another thing that Moringa is really good for is controlling blood sugar. And one of those health benefits is the way it promotes and helps you balance out your blood sugar. And there's been studies that have supported this. You know, most of these studies that I quote, and most of the studies that are done on herbs or anything for that matter, are uh, animal studies. So we're, most of the responses and the benefits that we get from people are just from people that have used the herb, you know, and they report the different types of benefits that um, they have. Although there was a 2010 study on 55 humans that reported Moringa leaf powder helped promote favorable blood sugar levels as well as lipid levels. And uh, do your research on the amount of toxicity that sugar causes in the body these days and the amount of people coming down with diabetes, coming down with fatty liver disease. You know, there's we we're, have an epidemic, a sugar epidemic. So Moringa has been known to help regulate your blood sugar levels. And again, what I'm talking about today, please note that these all of these herbs and all of these substances are great to help you. But the root cause is what we really want to address. Everybody has a self-healing mechanism in their body. Your body can heal itself from any condition. And it's the best thing you can do is avoid those toxins. So even though we're talking about all of the good health benefits of these, the real solution is for you to avoid sugar, for you to detoxify, for you to drink clean water, for you to eat organic foods, for you to change your lifestyle and live in a toxin suppressed environment. Uh, but getting back to the modern science, uh, reinforcing the traditional use, 
There was also a 2013 animal study that was published in the International Journal of Science and Technology that reported that the folk use of Moringa for supporting healthy blood sugar levels is actually justified. And again, it, it has to do, a lot of the research has to do with the antioxidants that are being discovered in the Moringa plant. A 2015 article in Molecular Nutrition and Food Research identified the Moringa isothiocyanates as the, com the compound, the main compound in the plant that contributes to the healthy blood sugar. There's not a lot of money that goes into research on all these things like pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical drugs, which are man-made toxic substitutes that basically cover up your symptoms, have hundreds of millions of dollars put behind them. Most of these studies that are done on herbs or components of herbs are done by colleges, universities, independent research researchers that don't really have a lot of money to put behind it, which is a which is a shame. And the reason why that is is who's going to fund the research on an herb if you can't patent it? You know, because anything in nature is non-patentable. So in other words, there's no money in it. But over the years, we're accumulating more and more data and more and more research. One of the things that I really love about Moringa is how it supports the liver. A couple of animal studies suggest it can help protect the liver from certain types of toxins. And if you've listened to me before, you know how strong I feel about toxins and the root cause of disease and the suppression of our own self-healing mechanism is caused by too many chemicals and toxins coming in and not enough coming out. So there was a 2010 animal study in Brazil that looked at moringa and cholesterol. And now they understand that cholesterol homeostasis or balance is maintained in part by the liver. So Moringa helps out by not letting the liver absorb so much cholesterol and increases the fecal excretion of cholesterol, which you have good cholesterol and you have bad cholesterol. Your HDL and your LDL cholesterol, and the rule of thumb is keep your highs high and your lows low. So you don't want high LDL cholesterol. Moringa has also been found to be very effective for the kidneys. and it helps flush toxins and deposits from the kidneys. That was found in a 2006 study. Moringa is great for the immune system. In a 2015 animal study, they reported that Moringa helps stimulate the immune system. But I can tell you that one of the fastest ways to stimulate the immune system is to just eat healthy. Intermittent fasting. You know, not eating as much, not eating as uh, late at night. Uh, Moringa has been shown to help the lungs in certain situations. Uh, we talked about blood sugar, but Moringa has also been known to help normalize blood pressure. Although blood pressure a lot of times has a lot to do with you being in a stressful state and you being in a sympathetic state instead of a parasympathetic state. And if you don't know what those are, that's just a state of calmness or a state of uh, stress or anxiety. Moringa has been shown to have benefits for the brain, uh, which is very important these days. I mean, so many people are complaining of, you know, forgetting things and, and there's so many nootropics out there right now for brain health and for memory. There was actually a 2003 study published in the Indian Journal of experimental biology that reported that Moringa root extract has a favorable impact on neurotransmitters. There's also been a couple of positive results to suggest it has the potential to work as a nootropic, which stimulates BDNF, which is a brain-derived neurotrophic factor. In other words, it's just a balance. But also, you know, all these people are taking all these brain supplements, but in reality, your gut is what really controls the production of neurotransmitters in the brain and serotonin and dopamine and everything else. So when everybody's looking up here to try to fix this organ, 
what they really should be fixing is the gut and they should be repairing their gut tissue because there's a gut brain connection. And if you want to find out more about that, just type in Google gut brain connection. Also, as we age, women and men actually uh, have difficulty with their sex life, with their libido. And Moringa has been shown to help that. As a matter of fact, a Duke University study showed that having sex roughly 200 times or more per year could increase your lifespan by six years. Now, whether that's in line with that, what's right for you or not, that doesn't matter. But we do know that a healthy sex life is good for depression and many other things. And although the exact reason is unclear, scientists have found that Moringa reduces the stress hormone that causes male sexual dysfunction. And that consuming Moringa regularly can reduce this stress and actually increase sexual desire as well as encourage everything to be functioning right in the physical sense. So scientists also found that Moringa contains saponins, or saponins, some people call them. And that's the chemical compound that enhances sex drive and levels of the sex hormone testosterone. So some people have asked me, how long does it take to start noticing the benefits of Moringa once I start taking it? And people always want results right away. But evaluating and looking um and doing my research on it, the standard amount of time that most people start feeling benefits is around three days with up to around three to four weeks. So if you're taking Moringa, give it some time, give it three to four weeks before you start noticing things, any type of uh, benefits, although you might start noticing benefits right away. Uh, the Moringa oil actually is extremely beneficial for the skin. You can buy that uh, different places, but it has revitalizing effects. Any, even, even Moringa extracts, if, it, if there's a Moringa extract, a certified organic Moringa extract in a glycerin base, it can be extremely effective for the skin. There was one human study that showed Moringa cream improved the appearance of skin and the appearance of wrinkles as well. Uh, what are some of the other common questions that I get about Moringa? What does Moringa taste like? Well, Moringa tastes a lot like spinach. It's got a mild green flavor. Uh, you can also add Moringa. It's very versatile. You can add it to juices. You know, if you have an extract, you can add it to water. People put it in their smoothie for su as a superfood. You can add it to green juices. You can add Moringa powder to salad, salad dressings. You can add it to soup. You can even bake with it in certain instances. So it's a very versatile, uh, very beneficial herb. Another question that we get is people feel their energy levels rise with Moringa. And they always say, well, does Moringa have caffeine in it? It doesn't have caffeine, but the energy boosting effects are the nutrients that it has, particularly the coenzymes. And one of the coenzymes in Moringa is NADH, and that comes from niacin from B vitamins. And it's involved in the cellular energy production because NADH helps improve the brain, the heart, and the muscle function. And it has cognitive benefits as well to help you improve your senses and your concentration. So if you're sensitive to caffeine, but you still want a little boost, you still want a little energy, you know, B12 works great for that. And Moringa can also help you in that manner and help you with your, your need to boost your brain activity and also your energy levels without the jitterness or the anxiety or the insomnia that you might get from drinking coffee. So it's kind of like a natural coffee replacement. Another interesting fact about Moringa is in Africa and some of the developing countries, 
they use moringa to purify water. So they take the seeds of the moringa tree and they, they have some amazing, amazing properties. They crush them all up and then it becomes a natural binder and they can, they can mix it in with water and the seeds actually bind all the toxins. They catch all the fine substances like bacteria and salts and impurities and all that stuff that clump together. And then they have purified water to drink. Another interesting fact about Moringa is the ability for Moringa to bond to arsenic. So we have arsenic contamination in the food and most of the water supplies. It's all over the world. Certain types of rice contain particularly high levels of arsenic. And long term, you know, I say long term exposure, let's say a couple of years, short term exposure to arsenic. Arsenic is very cancer-causing, can lead to health problems over time. Studies have shown that long-term exposure to arsenic can cause cancer, can cause heart disease. Studies that have been done on, on mice and rats have actually shown that the leaves and the seeds of moringa may protect against some of these effects of arsenic toxicity. So there's very few plants in the world that offer as many nutrients, medicinal properties, uh, the flowers, the, the leaves, um, natural harmful organism killers. You know, when you look at bacteria, fungus, yeast, mold, all of these things, antiseptics, fungicides, moringa has the ability to alter these and has been shown in studies to work on some of these harmful organisms that we all have inside our body that we need to cleanse ourselves from on a regular basis. Some of the other things that, that we've researched, some of the other health benefits would be like sore throats, fever, uh, bronchitis, swollen glands because of the inflammation, chest congestion, headache, uh, ear infections, moringa oil in the ear, conjunctivitis, just a few other things. And some of the people in Africa actually call moringa, the moringa tree, the never die tree because it is so hardy. It's so hardy to drought. It even produces fruit during drought conditions. Um, although Moringa doesn't hold up that well during cold. So if the temperature gets pretty cold in your area, it might be pretty difficult for you to grow Moringa. Uh, another question that comes up is, can pregnant women or nursing women take Moringa? It's not really recommended during pregnancy, although research suggests that Moringa can increase the production of breast milk. Studies have not yet been done, enough studies to determine the safety for, a nerf, uh, for somebody who's nursing an infant. So it's best to avoid Moringa. That's your own decision you're going to make. But my personal uh, opinion is that you should avoid Moringa if you're breastfeeding or during pregnancy, especially the root and the bark and the flowers, because they can cause contractions of the womb, and that can lead to a possible miscarriage. Um, the leaves are determined to be fairly safe, but because there hasn't been a lot of studies on the leaves uh, and any type of contractive uh, forces that they may cause, like the bark or the roots or the flowers, it's best to avoid all forms of Moringa if you're pregnant. That is a good summary of Moringa. Anytime you need any more information on Moringa, feel free to reach out to us at Global Healing Center. Thank you so much for spending the time watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And just remember, you have the power to heal yourself. Mm -hmm.